Hi, I'm Dr. Joshua Durham. Today I'm going to be giving a little mini lecture on metabolic syndrome and the pathophysiology and things that we can do and work on in order to reverse that. And so the first thing we need to talk about are the three macronutrients. We have carbohydrates, we have protein, and we have fat. Now, carbs and fat are basically just energy. So E stands for energy. Energy is just empty calories. We need energy to function and to perform our body's processes. Protein, oh, protein is a little bit different. What's interesting about protein is, is protein requires energy. So what does that mean? That means when you eat protein, you actually burn calories. It has a thermogenic effect. And if historically you look at what humans in the wild ate, in general we ate somewhere between 30 to 35 percent of our calories from protein. However, the average American today eats around 8 percent. All right, so if you're not eating protein, you're eating energy. So what are carbohydrates? Carbohydrates are basically any substance that's going to turn into glucose or sugar in your blood. Some different examples would be fruit, grains. Grains are usually a mixture. They will have some protein and some fats. Um, starches, corn syrup, sugar, right? So when we eat carbohydrates, what happens is, is these get converted into sugar into our blood. And your body recognizes that and sends out a signal in a hormone called insulin. Insulin will then tell the sugar to go to your cells where it's used as energy. And then the leftover will go to your liver. Okay, In the liver, this excess glucose or sugar is turned into triglycerides. Okay. Now triglycerides are basically just fat in your blood. These will get sent to your fat cells where they're stored. And then when you go to bed overnight and you get up in the morning and you skip your breakfast because you're in too big of a hurry, what should happen is, is your body pulls some of these triglycerides out and use them as a fuel. The problem in America, though, is, is most people don't go without food. And so we're constantly driving this. Um, so let's talk about fat. Now, this gets a little more complicated. There's three different kinds of fats we want to focus on. The first one is um, saturated fat. Okay, and that's like uh, your uh, butter your dairy, coconut oil. Then you've got monounsaturated fat, and that's kind of like olive oil. Now, in a lot of these, you have a blend. You'll have some monounsaturated fat, some saturated fat, just depending on what you're eating. Nobody's ever just eating one at a time. Um, and then you've got polyunsaturated fat, okay? So this is where it gets a little confusing, but more interesting. When we eat saturated fat, our body initially tries to not store it, okay? And it circulates in the blood a little bit longer. And if you go look at what's going on, our uh, cells in our, in our body have these little organelles called mitochondria. And mitochondria are what the Carbs and the fats go in, and they make ATP. And that's really what our body runs on is ATP. Well, when we eat saturated fat, our mitochondria love saturated fat. And they pump out a lot of ATP, and they can even perform thermogenesis and lose excess energy in the form of heat. So 
I think that kind of goes back to when we were hunters and gatherers and when we ate an animal and we ate it nose to tail. Our mitochondria knew when saturated fat was coming in that we had just got to kill and we have a feast. And so it would crank out the energy. But eventually it will, it will make its way into your fat cells. The monounsaturated fat gets soaked up pretty easy and the polyunsaturated fats get soaked up really easy. One thing to understand about the polyunsaturated fats is, is these are unsaturated fats. And what you need to know is the more unsaturated a fat is, that means it's more unstable. And so when these unstable fats make it to your mitochondria in high quantities, it can actually slow down the production of ATP. And if it oxidizes, it can actually damage your mitochondria. So if we step back and talk about the polyunsaturated fats a little bit, what we need to understand is this is your omega-6 and your omega-3 fats, okay? Omega-3 is anti-inflammatory and omega-6 is pro-inflammatory. So what does that mean? That means when your body makes inflammatory molecules, it's primarily making them from omega-6. And when it makes anti-inflammatory, it's primarily making them from omega-3. So what does that matter? Well, if you check a human uh, before the 18th century and you were to check how much omega-6 versus omega-3 did they have, they had a ratio of about 2 to 1. All right? And we primarily got this omega-6 in the wild from nuts and seeds. But in the mid-18th century, early 19th century, they invented these things called seed oils. And if you fast forward to today, because they put these seed oils in all of our food, what you find is the average American has an omega-6 to 3 ratio of 20 to 1, which is not good. And basically what happens is that we take and we have our sugar, our grains, and our seed oils, and we just keep eating, and we keep filling up this process. And eventually what happens is your fat cells get full. And when they're full, they start sending out a signal to stop storing fat. These triglycerides back up in the liver. And you still have all this sugar, all these carbs coming in. You still have all these external fats coming in. And basically you end up clogging your liver and you get what's called fatty liver disease. And if this goes unchecked, it will lead to cirrhosis and will kill you. So what happens is your liver and your fat cells, they all start sending out these signals to try to protect themselves. And they say, stop listening to insulin. And when that starts happening, you're in trouble. What happens next is your blood sugar goes up, your triglycerides go up, And now you're what's called energy toxic. You literally have sugar and fat sitting in your blood and you can't use it. And you have this constant back and forth of trying to store it, trying not to store it. So what happens then is your body sees this and it sends out more insulin. And so you have this fight between insulin resistance being sent out by the organs and then the pancreas secreting more insulin, trying to get the sugar and the fat out of the, the bloodstream. So this is basically the pathophysiology and what's going on with diabetes. It is literally a state of energy toxicity. So what I tell my patients is, if you, this is what's going on and this is the problem, what do you think is going to happen if you eat an apple? Is that going to make this problem better or worse? It'll make your sugar go up, right? What happens if you eat candy, more sugar? It's going to go up, right? And every time it goes up, your body's going to continue to increase this insulin resistance syndrome. Um, so the next thing to start thinking about then is what can we do to fix this? Now, a lot of us will prescribe medications. And depending on the medication you prescribe, it could make this better or worse. 
Because if you give a medicine to a diabetic that pushes the sugar and fat into these cells more, you're going to just cause more insulin resistance. So technically, the worst thing to give a type 2 diabetic is insulin because you're just going to keep the process going. You're going to shove more sugar into their eyes, their kidneys, their organs, their liver, and it's just going to continue to get worse and worse. So what are the solutions? The, the solution number one is stop eating. Intermittent fasting. I tell my patients to stop eating all the time. If you just keep eating, you're just going to keep driving this problem. I recommend everybody does what's called a 16-8. You just eat in an eight hour window. When that window opens up, then you can start to eat. Number two is exercise. Exercise is great. It doesn't really generally make people lose a lot of weight. Most people are just fighting the calories they're eating. If you can train yourself to exercise fasted, well now you're gonna burn the sugar and fat out of your blood and maybe start dipping in to your liver and fat cells. And then the third thing is, is all right, well, when it's time to eat, what should I eat? Well, you don't want to eat carbs. You definitely don't want to eat a bunch of polyunsaturated fats. Um, but the, the solution is actually simple. You just want to eat more protein than energy, right? You eat more protein than energy, then your body's forced to burn the energy that's floating around in your blood pull the energy out of your organs and repair itself. So this is why the most effective way to fix this problem would be a high protein, a low carb, low fat diet. And then what's great is once you get to your goal weight, if you eat equal protein to equal energy, and you avoid these polyunsaturated fats, for which we'll give more discussions on in the future. Um, then you will have reversed your diabetes, and you'll keep it from coming back. Thanks for listening.